trims and accessories used in garment industry in garment manufacturing process main raw material is fabric but it is not possible to make garment only with fabric to make complete garment different types of auxiliaries materials are used these auxiliaries materials are called trims and accessories garment trims and accessories are very important to make garment aesthetic functional and commercially acceptable but trimming and accessories are not the same thing their function and looks are completely different we have to discuss these things in the following section about the differences between trims and accessories so trims and accessories are those materials that are used in garment other than main fabric this is self fabric even lining materials fall under trims and accessories every one of us would have heard of these terms it seems that trims and accessories may refer to two different types or kinds or categories of material one term may be used as functional component and other term is used for non functional and decorative purpose but this may be a assumption as mentioned in the book written by lock and kunz in apparel manufacturing the following definition is found for trims and accessories accessories are defined by lock and kunz as item that enhances the aesthetic appeal or function of a garment including belt scarves or other objects in the another hand trims as defined as a materials used to ornament or enhance garments so trimming air trims are basically attached with the body of the garment by sewing these materials are used in sewing room with fabric trims are directly attached with garments these are used for functional purposes there are various types of trims used in 
apparel manufacturing these trims are sewing thread button zipper lining interlining motif ribbit stopper less bread elastic different types of labels shoulder pad hook and loop twill tape velcro tape seam sealing tape shoulder tape fusing material cross set rib pom pom wedding ribbon metal badge down string or draw string or cord piping cord emblem logo print swivel hook eyelet or grommet collar stay cord bell buckle weaving belt cable or steel wear adjuster rico and elastic threads in other hand garment accessories as mentioned earlier also are not directly attached with garment during the sewing process these are used to make a garment attractive for sell and packaging in a word accessories are used for decorative purposes so list of the accessories used in garment manufacturing are hangers hang tag poly bag collar stand size tag tissue paper backboard neck board paper band pin or clip tag pin cotton sticker safety sticker arrow sticker elastic bag mini poly bag gum tape scotch tape pp band inner cotton outer cotton iron seal tarpaulin paper butterfly both side tape plastic staple barcode or ups upc ball chain cotton pad size sticker numbering stickers defect indicator safety pin brass pin size clip master cotton etc now next thing is that how to select the garment accessories the selection of garment accessories in garment manufacturing so in garment manufacturing accessories are the second important material after the fabric 
it plays a vital role in apparel manufacturing to make garments and shipping it up to the buyer. Selection of trims and accessories is generally carried out depending on types of the accessories, types of the products, whether the trims and accessories are to be used for men's wear, women's wear or children's wear. Usually for value added products, garment accessories should be selected from approved sources after carrying out quality inspection as per international standards. Proper care should be maintained while selecting clothing accessories for children wear. So the garment accessories or trims is used to contribute in a secondary manner to the wearer's output outfit. Accessories are often used to complete an outfit and are chosen to specifically complement the wearer's look. Although garment or apparel accessories are additional components worn along with garments go a long way not just in enhancement and beautifying the overall look of a garment but also have functional aspects. Garment trims and accessories contribute to aesthetic appeal and functionality of the garment to the wearers. Generally there are three types of garment trims and accessories. The basic trims and accessories, decorative trims and accessories and finishing trims and accessories. The basic trims and accessories as explained those the functional basically though trims accessories will be there the button, zipper, lining, interlining, ribbons, toggles, velcro, elastic, rebates, label, motif, packing fabrics etc. And thread will also be part of the same or functional trims. Then second is basically the decorative trims and accessories. Those are bias tape, elastic tape, buttonhole tape, seaming tape. Now we talk about the different type of trims and accessories basically used in the garment manufacturing. There are basically two types of the trimming. They are visible trimming and invisible trimming. Visible trims can be seen from the outside of the garment. For example, maybe interlining. Uses of trimming in apparel industry. The trimming are used mainly for two purposes such as functional purpose and second case is basically decorative purpose. The functional purpose the trims are zipper, button, label etc. For decorative purpose example of trims and accessories are lace, bread, motif etc.
different types of garment trimming which is basically sewing thread, button, interlining that is a fusible interlining, non-fusible interlining, lining, label, main label, care label, size label, price label, flag label, composite labels. Then we have motif, lace, bread, elastic, velcro, twill tape, metal base, etc. Now we discuss about the quality of garments trimming. Textile materials or non-textile materials are mainly used to make garment trimming. But they should be selected carefully to get desired performance from them. The important qualities of trimming are listed below. First is lifetime. If the trimmings become fed or break then garment will not be wearable so lifetime of trims should be equal to garments second is shrinkage if trims become shrinkage by washing or ironing as a result appearance of the garment may be hampered and ultimately garment will not be wearable so the shrink ability of the fabric and the trimming or trims and accessories should be checked in advance. Next is color fastness. Color fastness is very important for trimming. If fastness become poor then garment will be also poor appearance the color of trimming should not be faded due to washing or exposure to sunlight next is rust the trimmings which are made from metal then material should become rust free if rusting occurs they will create spot on garment so before using in garments then obviously check that is electro plated comfortability trimming should become hygienic and obviously it will be comfortable now we have been looking after the introduction to the different types of the sewing threads the property 
the thread construction and factors affecting thread performance. The smallest failure in thread performance results in losses on investment in material, equipment, garment engineering and labor. Hence, it is important to know the thread thoroughly. Enhancing thread knowledge, analyzing thread parameters, the right selection procedure and use of thread plays a major role in achieving good sewing performance and the desired seam quality. So sewing threads are special kind of yarns that are engineered and designed to pass through a sewing machine rapidly. They form efficient stitches without breaking or becoming distorted during the useful life of the product. The basic function of a thread is to deliver aesthetics and performance in stitches and seams. What are the factors that affect functions of a sewing thread? Factors affecting aesthetics Color Luster and fineness or thickness should be considered while selecting a thread for decorative purpose such as top stitching or embroidery. Other considerations include hue and shade matching, color fastness, stitch selection, and uniformity of stitch performance. Factors affecting performance. Thread used in garments must be durable enough to withstand the abrasion and needle heat that occur while sewing, garment finishing, stretching and recovery during wear. Thread performance in garments can be evaluated from its seam strength, abrasion resistance, elasticity, chemical resistance, flammability, color fastness.
basically sewability of thread is a term used to describe a sewing threads performance good sewability is uniform in diameter with a good surface finish longitudinal uniformity of thread contributes to uniform strength and reduced friction as it passes through the stitch forming mechanism it is also minimizes thread breakage and the associated costs incurred from re-threading machines repairing stitches and producing inferior quality products sewability parameters the parameters that define the superior sewability of thread are no breakage in high speed machine consistent stitch formation no skipped stitch evenness to prevent changes in tension during sewing a high level of abrasion resistance sufficient surface smoothness to pass easily through the machine guides thread classification thread can be classified in different ways some common classification are those based on substrate construction and finish then first i am going to talk about the classification of thread based on substrate it the natural the uses of thread made from natural substrates is now minimal in industry applications however the most commonly used natural thread is cotton thread next is synthetic due to limitations of natural fibers thread users have turned to threads made from synthetic fibers as they have desirable properties of exceptionally high tenacity high resistance to abrasion and good resistance to chemicals they are also not 
significantly affected by moisture rot mildew insects or bacteria next classification of thread is based on construction of thread structure the spun thread is basically made using natural or synthetic fibers spun polyester is one of the most widely used threads it is stronger than cotton threads of a comparable size and is available in a wide variety of sizes and colors now core spun thread core spun thread is a combination of staple fibers and filaments the most commonly used core spun thread has multiple ply construction with each ply consisting of a polyester filament core with cotton or polyester fibers wrapped around the core this thread structure influences the strength of filament polyester and the suitability of cotton or polyester fiber wrap core spun thread is generally used for high speed sewing of many garment types especially those requiring high seam strength filament threads filament threads are stronger than spun threads of the same fiber and size three types of filament threads are commonly used mono filament thread smooth multi filament thread and textured filament thread mono filament thread is made from a single continuous fiber with a specified thickness though mono filament is strong uniform and inexpensive to make 
it lacks flexibility and is stiff and scratchy in feel as a result uses is normally restricted to hems draperies and upholstered furniture now smooth multi filament thread it is usually made from nylon or polyester and is used where high strength is a primary requirement it consists of two or more continuous filaments twisted together it is commonly used to sew shoes leather garments and industrial products textured filament thread textured filament thread is usually made from polyester and is used primarily as the looper thread for cover stitching textured filaments gives the yarn more cover and high extensibility but makes the thread more subject to snagging basic of thread construction all conventional sewing threads begin their production cycle as simple yarns these basic yarns are produced by twisting together relatively short fibers or fine continuous filament some terms used in context of thread construction are twist twist is simply the number of turns per unit length a thread with too little twist may fray and break one with too much twist can cause snarling looping and knotting balance is the key and a good sewing thread has it twist direction the direction of finishing twist is important twist can be inserted either direction and this is described as either z or s twist most common machines use a z twist thread there are other descriptions of 
twist which were used in the past but these should not be used to avoid any confusion direction of twist does not affect the strength of the thread but it can seriously impair its performance when it is used on a machine for which it is not suited ply and cord yarns with many components are twisted together to form ply thread most commonly used are 2 3 or 4 ply threads threads are twisted together to give corded thread most commonly used are 4 6 or 9 cords after this the size the thread size the overall thickness of the final thread is referred as grist ticket number tax or count thread should be as fine as possible depending on the required strength of the seam generally thicker threads have greater strength given the same fiber content and yarn structure finer threads tend to blend into the fabric surface and are less subject to abrasion than seams with heavier threads finer threads perform better with finer needles and produce less fabric distortion then heavier needles classification based on thread finish finishes are given to a thread for two purposes to improve sewability and to achieve a specific functional requirement to improve sewability some finishes involve increasing strength abrasion resistance and lubrication of the thread to achieve a specific functional requirement some finishes include bonding non rick anti fungal fire retardant water repellent and 
anti-static finishes. Package support. Swing threads are put in different types of packages according to the types of thread, machines and sewing needs. Package support is important for the thread to perform at its best during transport and usage in machines. Packages may be color coded according to the size and type of thread for easy identification. Now we are moving for thread terminologies. With a wide selection of threads to choose from, it is important to know some of the terminology associated with significant thread properties to judge the differences between different thread types. First is known as tensile strength. Tensile strength is the tension at which a thread breaks. It is expressed in grams or kilograms. It is force. Tenacity. Tenacity is relatively strength obtained by dividing the tensile strength by the thickness of the structure. Loop strength. Loop strength is the load required to break a length of thread which is looped through another length of the same thread. Minimum loop strength. Minimum loop strength is the strength of the weakest loop in the series of loops tested in a continuous length of thread. Elongation at break is the amount by which a thread is extended at its breaking point expressed as a percentage of its original thread. Modulus is a term used to denote a numerical value which indicates the manner in which the textile behaves when a tensile force is applied. Elasticity Elasticity is a property of thread which enables it to recover to its original length after being extended by a set amount. Shrinkage. 
shrinkage is the amount by which a thread contrasts under the action of washing or heating moisture regain moisture regain is the weight of moisture in a fiber or thread expressed as a percentage of weight of completely dry material requirement of good quality sewing thread good tensile strength hold the stitches and seam securely during wash and wear smooth surface and absence of faults ensures less friction between the needle and the material during high speed sewing the thread must be well lubricated to increase its sewability and resistance to abrasion uniform thickness and diameter uniform thickness and diameter results in an even sewing thread which moves smoothly and quickly through the needle i and the fabric it also affects the thread's tensile strength resistance to abrasion and its twist construction an uneven thread may twist into short knots and jam at the eye of needle good elasticity good elasticity enables thread to recover its original length immediately after the tension has been released the elasticity of sewing thread affects the strength and the finished quality of a stitched seam good color fastness good color fastness provides immunity to the different agents the thread is exposed to during manufacture and washing the thread must hence be uniformly dyed low shrinkage of the thread being used on the fabric material with higher shrinkage reduce the chances of seam puckering good resistance to chemical attack is a desirable property for thread used in garments which may undergo washing bleaching or dry cleaning good abrasion resistance good abrasion resistance ensures a good sewing performance and makes the thread more durable buttons buttons are an essential accessories which is normally 
used in all kinds of garments therefore button can be said to be the main accessories of garments in garments the main purpose of the buttons is mainly functional and decorative functional purpose refers to open and close garments with security and others purpose used for garment decoration now here i am going to discuss about garment buttons and their type types of buttons used in garments in apparel industry buttons are normally classified according to the size materials and holes by this way buttons are as follows according to the line number according to material used according to number of hole according to line number line number is the measuring unit of button and indicates the diameter of button we know that line is equal to 0.025 inch or 0.635 mm in the case of 12 line button it comes into 0.30 inches if it is a 20 line button it will be 0.50 inches if it is 0.7 inches for 28 line button and for 36 line button it is 0.90 inches and so on so for 550 for 40 line button it the it should be 1 inch and for 50 line button it is 1.25 inches now we will discuss about the common button size and their uses in the garment 12 line button normally we use in button down shirts 16 line buttons normally used in spread collar shirt and for shirts mostly 18 line button used in shirts mostly 24 line button most common for pant again 24 line button sometimes used button 26 line button is decorative and other uses 28 line button is decorative and other uses 32 line button decorative and other uses and 36 line button again decorative and other uses according to material used plastic button made of pl plastic polyamide poly acrylonitrile etc cheap not glossy or widely used in shirts metal buttons normally it's used in denim pants trouser etc wooden button used in decorative purposes horn button made up of horn of animals used in shirts pants artificial horns are also used which is made of nylon plastic or additives chalk button used to make plastic glossy used in shirts 
printed button used in decorative purposes according to the holes button used to come in two holes button four holes button there also have the few special buttons those buttons are basically sank button snap button decorative buttons buttons the picture shown here is two hole plastic button and this size of the button comes under line and this is 18 line of the button this type of button can be used in blouses trousers this button is also the plastic button but this is of four holes and of 18 line size of the button is 18 line this button can be used in shirts formal trousers kurtas etc next button this is called snap fastener button where we can see the metals are there this is of the metal and this is of 18 line button this is used in jackets coats shrugs cardigans etc this type of button is basically the sank button this button is again of made of metal and the size of the button is of 32 line this button is can be used in jeans denim jackets cap rays etc this one this button is called covered button because this is covered and this size of the button is of 40 line this button has been used for normally in the decorative purposes now we'll discuss about the characters of a button a button should not reduce its color during using a button should not reduce its colors and strength after washing hot or cold water next a button should not melt or crease by calendaring or ironing heat next a button should be in perfect in wash fastness as result as it's never be able to make discolor the dress by its own color a button should not broke or itchy by a tiny thrust a button should be able to sticky with the dress a button should be rust free after using a long duration through its made from steel or iron metal a button should be comfortable and look your gorgeous a button should be carb of the button should be smooth so that it never harm the cloth or the body a button should be easy to use anywhere anytime here is a list of the different type of the buttons we are having the shirt buttons the cardigan buttons the coat buttons press button hook button hooks and eyes hooks and fasteners sank buttons leather buttons cloth button metallic button wooden buttons printed buttons buckles glass studs 
वेक्रो टेप फैंसी बटन्स लैक बटन्स कुर्ता बटन सेफ्टी पिन्स ब्रॉचेस कफ लिंक्स सिपर्स चाइनीज फ्रॉग पर्ल बटन्स वैक्स बटन्स zippers zippers use two sets of interlocking teeth called chain zipper or coil called coil zipper each connected to a strip of fabric tape the teeth or coils are formed of metal plastic or synthetic material a slider with a tab which may be purely functional or serve a decorative function as well is used to open or close the zipper besides the detail of mechanism there are several other ways of categorizing zippers like categorization based on element or teeth material types of zippers based on element or teeth material there are three main categories of zippers which are based on three different types of materials first is metal metal zipper is most basic original zipper first produced the first zipper was made of metal around 1917 and 1920s when slider slides up in a zipper the elements get tightly interlocked to keep zipper shut metal zippers are divided into two groups depending on material used and the process of manufacture teeth formed from a metal wire either flat or profiled and made from brass aluminum nickel or white brass is nickel free second is teeth die cast directly onto the tape with zinc metal metal zippers are usually made in a variety of finishes such as golden brass antique brass antique silver gun metal silver etc these finishes are achieved by chemical treatment of zipper chain and matching plating of sliders and end stops generally metal zippers are available in various finishes but most commonly 
यूज्ड जिपर फिनिशेस आर मेंशन बिलो एल्मोनियम एलिमेंट्स आर कंस्ट्रक्टेड यूजिंग एल्मोनियम ब्रास एलिमेंट्स आर कंस्ट्रक्टेड यूजिंग अ ब्रास एलॉय टिपिकली अ कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ कॉपर एंड जिंक एंटीक ब्रास एलिमेंट्स मेड फ्रॉम ब्रास दैट इज केमिकली ट्रीटेड टू गिव अ वॉर्न आउट ब्रास एपियरेंस ब्लैक ऑक्सीडाइज्ड एलिमेंट्स आर मेड फ्रॉम ब्रास दैट इज केमिकली ट्रीटेड टू अ ब्लैक मैट फिनिश मोल्डेड प्लास्टिक these plastic zippers have individually injected molded teeth fused directly on the tip of the zipper the high performance resins used to manufacture molded plastic elements are incredibly strong and make zippers that are durable strong and flexible these zippers are ideal for outer wear and heavy weight garments or any outdoor application plastic zippers are divided into five groups lfc or l type zipper l type zipper made with minder ruhmann type coil stitched around the edge of the carrier tape cfc zippers made with a spiral coil stitched on one side of the carrier tape woven in coil zippers in which the coil is formed and directly woven into the carrier tape on special looms next is plastic molded zippers in which the teeth elements made from polyacetal commonly known as delrin are directly molded onto the carrier tape next one is plastic extruded zippers in which a string of teeth elements is first extruded and then stitched onto the carrier tape next is invisible zipper the main categories of zippers as described also include specialty zippers which have special type of construction or parts or finishes cfc zippers have a special class known as invisible zippers 
due to the special construction and mode of use. These zippers do not require the provision of a fly since they are made and stitched in such a manner that only a hairline seam is visible from outside. These zippers are predominating used in ladies dresses and skirts. These zippers are available in knitted and woven tapes. Two way zippers. These zippers are made usually in five or larger sizes plastic CFC, plastic molded and metal. The major application are outer wear and luggage. These are made in X type or O type. Open end zipper. Some zipper applications requires a zipper to detach completely that is in the case of jackets outer wears instead of a fixed bottom stop box and pin attachment is used coil coil zipper are made from a continuous coil of monofilament in place of individual teeth. Coil zippers are often referred to as nylon zippers. The teeth of these zippers are extruded nylon strip soon onto the zipper tape. These zippers are very flexible and are available in a variety of sizes or gauzes. Coil zippers have many applications from fashion wear to all types of tents and canvas goods and bags. Types of zipper based on functionality. The first zipper picture is shown as closed end zipper. The second zipper is opened end zipper. Third zipper is regular two ways. Fourth one is two way open tail to tail with double top stop. And the last and fifth one is two way closed head to head with double bottom stops. Zippers are always measured from component to component that is end stops regardless of zipper styles. Closed end zippers are non separating and are normally opened and closed with a slider. The bottom stop is made up of a single part and does not allow complete separation of the chain. These zippers are used on trousers, jeans 
bags, boots, etc. Next is open end or separating zippers. This have separated ends. The ending part is joined by a box and pin mechanism provided on the lower end of the zipper. The zippers are closed using sliders and are normally used on jackets and other outer wear. Two way separating zippers have separated ends as well. The bottom slider allows movement from the bottom of the zipper. These zippers are used in rain wear, spot wear and sleeping bag. Two way head to head zippers has two sliders at the center of the chain when zipper are closed. Head to head zipper can be open end by pulling the slider towards the stops but cannot be separated because the ending part have two stops that cannot be divided. These zippers are mainly used for bags, backpacks and luggage. Two way tail back to back zipper. Zippers are slider on opposite side ends. When zipper is closed, these zippers can be opened by pulling the sliders towards each other but cannot be separated. They are used for overalls and anything else. Length tolerance in zippers. Generally zippers can vary when bulk is received due to various factors. Based on JS, the following S3015, JS S3015, the following tolerance is acceptable in zipper length. If the zipper length is more than 30 centimeters or 12 inches, the acceptance tolerance is plus and minus 5 mm, that is 0.2 inches. If the zipper length is between 30 cm to 60 cm, that is 12 inches or it is more than 12, uh, 12 inches and less than 24 inches, I think. Length tolerance in zippers. Generally, zippers can vary when bulk is received due to various factors. Based on JIS S3015 standard, the tolerance is acceptable in zipper length, which is mentioned further. If the zipper length is less than 30 centimeters, that is close to 12 inches, the acceptable tolerance is plus minus 5 mm or 0.2 inches. If the zipper length is more than and equal to 
30 centimeter or 12 inches or if it will be less than 30 centimeters that is the 24 inches. So, if the zipper length is between 12 inches to 24 inches, the acceptable tolerance is plus and minus 10 mm that is 0.4 inches. If the zipper length is more than or equal to 60 centimeters and less than 20 centimeters, 120 centimeters. So, that also we can say that if the zipper length is more than and equal to 24 inches and less than 20, 47 inches. In that case, acceptable tolerance level for zipper is plus and minus 15 mm or 0.6 inches. If the zipper length is more than 120 centimeters, that is 47 inches, then zipper acceptable tolerance level should be plus and minus 2 percent of the total dimension of zipper. There are different types of zippers and guide to different parts of a zipper. Dependable reliable quality zippers are worth their weight in gold. They can make a break a garment or accessories. When choosing the appropriate zipper for any particular project, It is to be taken into consideration the factors like length of the seam, design and type of fabric. The different three different ways for attaching zippers and how to attach exposed zippers and sewing invisible zippers. So, now we are moving to the anatomy of zippers. Zippers has different parts. The first is known as teeth. This is a central part of a zipper. The track of the zipper which can be of plastic or metal. The zipper is opened or closed by means of this particular teeth. Second one is tape. This is the fabric on either side of the zipper teeth. It is usually made of polyester. This is stitched to the fabric to attach the zipper. Next is pull and slider. This is the metal or plastic piece which opens and closes the 
zipper teeth by moving along the teeth track. The pull is used to move the slider. Next one is stopper. This is the metal thing at the end or edge of the zipper teeth which stops the zipper teeth from separating fully. These are stoppers on the top of the teeth and at the bottom. For a separating zipper, instead of bottom stopper, there is a box and pin mechanism which closes the zipper and slides it open. There are different types of zippers. One is known as closed end zipper, separating zippers, two way separating zippers, continuous zipper chain. Closed end zipper. These are zippers that do not separate at bottom. They have a stopper at the bottom and stopping the pull going further and separating. Separating zippers. This zipper has both ends open with one slider. They have a lock, a box and pin mechanism at the bottom which can be used to attach the zipper teeth. This type of jeepers can be used in jackets, construction clothing, coats, sweatshirts, hoodies, blouses, vest where the whole two, whole two parts have to be opened. They usually come in long lengths. These zippers are also known as open end zipper. Next one is two way separating zippers. These are also called dual zippers or double zippers or two way zippers. They have two sliders or pulls. When the zipper is installed, the bottom slider can move up the teeth of the zipper. Unzipping the lower portion of the zipper 
they are great when used in jackets also two way separating zippers can be used in luggages continuous zipper chain there are extra long zippers which can cut in any length they are as long as 100 to 300 plus inches long the extra long zipper chains are used for tents cushions garment bags mattress covers etc or anywhere that needs longer than average zippers according to the types of material with which the zippers are made they are classified as follows nylon coil zippers these are thin zippers made of plastic with polyester sides they are lightweight and are available as separating or closed or two way separating and in different length next one is metal teeth zippers these come in many length and in many makes the short zippers used on jeans has a shiny gold brass finish they are available in 9 to 4 inches or we can say 4 to 9 inches length then there are aluminum zippers these are heavy duty heavy gauge zippers nickel ones have a shiny silver finish and are more durable than aluminum ones molded plastic zippers the zip plastic zippers are also known as parka zipper or look almost like metal zipper these are used on jackets parkas mouth wraps coats hoodies sweaters sports wear fleece jackets etc they look very attractive and at the same time they are lightweight heat resistant and rust proof according to the use 
to which they have to put to jeepers or different classification further. Now next zipper is we can say that pant zipper. Pant zippers are short nylon coil zippers also called pants zippers in my heart of the world because this is the type of zippers used in a pant fly. They are made of plastic with polyester sides. You can use them on skirts, pillows, purses and blue blouse bags. They usually have a stopper at the bottom to prevent them from getting separated. If you have a zipper which you can cut out with this stopper you will be having manually show and zipper teeth together to prevent them separating. Next is invisible zippers. This is a type of zipper which looks almost invisible when applied on seam except for its small narrow pull. An invisible zipper foot is generally used with a zipper foot as well. It can be used as a back of the dresses and the side seam of tight fitting dresses, skirts etc and it will look almost as if there is no zipper, they are just a seam. Next is bag zippers. These zippers are coil zippers which has a non-lock slider or puller. These zippers do not separate at the bottom. These are available at a length of 9 inches and 14 inches. Water replicant zippers, these are best of using on tents overdoor gear etc. These are sturdy weatherproof zippers which will survive all rough weathers. Interlining Types and Functions of Interlining in Apparel Interlining is basically anything used between two layers of fabric to give more body and support. A fusible interlining is a thin layer made 
from woven, knitted or non-woven material, bonded mechanically or thermally which when fused with fabric panel can give reinforcement, durability and can also stabilize and make sewing work easier while stitching. It is type of accessories used to assembling fabric parts which is supplied from cutting section. Different types of accessories are used to make a complete garment and interlining is one type of the trimming. As mentioned earlier, it is placed between two layers of a fabric in apparel. It can be fused or it can be stitched to specific area in the garment. It is most extensively used trimmings in apparel. Types of interlining. Interlinings are of two types. These are fusible interlinings and non-fusible interlining. Fusible interlining is most used interlining. The interlining which is used between two layers of fabrics by applying heat and pressure for certain times that is called fusible interlining. Fusible interlining is used for all kinds of apparel. Also it is used in ready to wear and bespoke garment. Fusible interlining is popular for some advantage which is mentioned below. To get similarities among the apparel, interlining gives the same outlook of the apparel. Fusible interlining is normally available in the market. An application process is very easy. It is also very high productive. Next is non-fusible interlining. The interlining which is used between two layers of fabrics directly by sewing without heat or pressure that is called non-fusible interlining. This type of interlining is also called sewn interlining. Non Fusible interlining is used for special case. The application field is as mentioned below. Non fuse interlining use in flame retardant apparel. It is used for making apparel for fire service people. It is also used for making safety apparels for the people who works in re-rolling mills. It is specifically used in embroidery machine. So it depends on the uses, what type of the uses or what type of the garment we are looking for interlining for that particular garment. So interlining is made of made by different interesting way which is is can be is another study. Any garment 
with a high quality lining should get major bonus point. Lining are great for a lot of reasons. They give the garment a neater finish on the inside by hiding and protecting seams, interfacing, padding and all that stuff. They add an extra layer of warmth and protect the outer cell from skin, oils and sweat, which greatly prolonged the lifespan of the piece. So this lining is giving the garment with internal support from the inside of the garment. Mostly in the jackets we use interlining. We use interlining in the double layer skirts wherever we want, we want to hide the seams also and we want to have the another layer of the fabric. So lining is uh, another layer of the fabric which is finishing inside. So for items like fitted skirts, a lining also greatly improve fit because it prevents the outer fabric from clinging to your thighs and thereby creates a more streamlined silhouette. Lining are as much for some type of the garments but not all of them. Items that should be lined include anything that is very constructed, tailored, expensive to clean or delicate. Lighter garments, see-through fabrics, jackets, coats, structured garment dresses, loosely woven fabrics, suits, leathers, as well as knits and tailored skirts are some example where basically we use interlining. Assess the fabric of the lining like other fabrics. Make sure how it feels on the skin. In general linings should be made from thicker, sturdier material that is anti-static. Whether someone preferred cotton, satin or wool mix is depends on the choice of the wearer. But always it is to ensure that the lining has the same care code as the upper fabric. Otherwise getting it cleaned is going to be the huge hassle. Moving back to interlining types, woven interlining made from light weight fabrics usually used for most demanding conditions like the vestman, outerwear placket, jacket etc. Knitted interlining that is fusible knitted interlining are basically used in knit garments with stretches fused area also these provides perfect basis for efficient production circular and jersey knit fusible interlining have stretch and recovery properties non-woven interlinings high quality non-woven interlines are made from 100 percent polyamide products with an ultra fine coating to heavier blends. These are thermally or chemically bonded and used depending on applications. Generally it is available in very light weight of 100 grams. Water repellent interlines are thermal bonded. Non-woven specifically 
designed for rain wear peace goods thermally bonded non woven and circular knits can withstand the rigors of commercial wash processes such as garment wash enzyme wash stone wash bleach wash etc embroidery backings are made from non woven non fusible interlining materials which was easy tearable for washed garment non woven interlinings are now available which are easily soluble in hot or even normal wash water here interlinings are woven canvas made from horse hair mostly used in men's formal jackets and blazers next we are moving for the fusing recommendations a perfect working fusing press and appropriate conditions are needed to achieve good results only an exact balance combination of temperature pressure and time can guarantee an excellent adhesion therefore the temperature pressure and dwell time should be often checked periodically every day and well documented the whole scale of fabric should be tested before starting the production not just for the fusing but also for steam pressing ironing etc start production only after this checking big difference may influence the results before using a specific type of interlining for bulk production always refer to test reports containing analysis and recommended settings for using the material we need to always check before starting any bulk production for fusing that's called dwell time roller pressure fuse line temperature fusing conditions like thermostat setting bond strength surface appearance dimensional change machine check up external appearance area must be tidy and clean of any foreign yarns or fabric dust cutting dust heat charger changer in fact it must be dust free and bus, uh, belt must be clean at all times for better fusing results belt it is most frequently used part of the machine and must be free from any distortion and breakage or otherwise must be changed remember to change both upper and lower belt for best results and avoid causing different friction between both the belts pressure balance on a roller all roller must be checked to keep the belt in parallel and tight in line misaligned rollers can also be greatly reduce good results thermostat it must always function correctly must ensure to check manually using thermo paper and electronic thermometer timer or speed meter must function correctly to get the correct dwell time otherwise fusing condition might not meet giving poor fusing results good fusible interlining must have good bond strength good pill bond after wash controlled differential shrinkage active shrinkage and elongation through the wash and dry process do not get affected 
due to steaming can withheld over heat and pressure non woven fusible interlinings basically bias buyer advice test methods and minimum required standards for fusible interlinings to be used on specific fabrics these standards include mass bursting strength flexibility and durability and dimensional change on cold water immersion and also minimum tensile strength in the warp direction heat shrinkage and dry cleaning shrinkage of fusible interlinings are considered as important basically there are four types of non woven interlines best on construction random fabrics are arranged multidirectional in a random manner providing stability and strength along with suppleness and flexibility it can be good for medium to heavy weight fabric parallel fabrics are arranged in parallel this is good for knitwear fabrics cross fabrics are laid diagonally giving extensible versatile regain properties these interlines are very stable at a slight angle therefore suitable for soft and flexible outer fabrics composite these interlinings are <coughs> laminates made from two types of fiber lay for example random and parallel or parallel with a cross these are used for general purpose due to its balance property fusing procedures all of you ensure the fusing machine is properly heated up before starting bulk production every day or shift always test using same bulk panel interlining must be at least 2 mm shorter all around the fabric panel to be fused never cut interlining larger than the fabric this way the glue will contaminate the conveyor belt and fabric use carrier sheet while loading the fusible fusing panels to ensure that the interlining panel is not moved while loading fusing speed roller pressure and temperature must be correct as specified by supplier otherwise any incorrect standard will result in defective poor fusing quality never use a sandwich or multi layered fusing to save time this will result in pure poor fusing quality machine head changed must be checked for uniform temperature otherwise poor quality fusing will result if fusing by hand iron then iron must be placed firmly with weight and must not slide across the panel proper maintenance of machine is done on a regular basis never use steam iron for using panels do not blow cold air around fusing machines but 
rather use a well ventilated area for good working atmosphere always do testing by coordinating matching of fabric and interlining in up in warp and weft direction interlining must always be fused with interning on top of the fabric not upside down now we will discuss about the major defects which happens occurs due to incorrect uses of interlining on appearance first is called moire that is surface optical effect between two fabrics second type of defect used to be the bubbling which is basically localized d lamination third defect is basically strike back in this case basically the glue penetrates back through interlining then fourth defect we are mentioning that is called orange skin and this is basically where surface distortion by shrinkage difference next is strike through where glue penetrates through the fabric and comes to the face sides so these are the few defects which happens due to incorrect uses of interlining and it is on the appearance part so uh now we will discuss about the different types of the garments where basically different type of fusing we are using there are three types of the fusing process used in 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 the garment which are also mentioned here first is basically the reverse fusing in this process the fabric of interlining is spread on the fusing bed and the part consist of resin is directed upward then the fabric of garments is spread on resonated part of fabric and fusing is done there this is called reverse fusing in this process the area of interlining is comparatively small than the fabric of apparel as a result proper spreading is difficult here sandwich fusing generally fusing is done by continuous fusing machine where the heat is applied from both sides of the fabric in this process two pairs of fabric are fused that is the two interlinings are placed between or in the middle of two fabrics of apparel if the heat and pressure are not applied properly then four layers may be joined due to the effect of shrinking back during fusing by using this process the production can be increased but needs more time it may have unsatisfactorily infused garments double fusing in this process two types of interlinings are joined with the garment fabrics in a step during fusing there is needed to control the temperature during fusing and it must be able to set the interlining parts and garment parts properly this type of fusing is generally done in collar and front part of the jacket
Now we will discuss about the functionality of the fusing. Fusing is a classical example in the clothing industry for sticking together two clothes. It is also used in automotive and furniture industry for applying foams, knitted spacer or non-woven two leathers. A thermoplastic adhesive located between two flexible clothes is melted and the compound is fused by means of two pressure rollers at the end of the machine. Fusing in contrast to laminating does not use cooling. This means there always have to be a bonding. Coating is not possible. Furthermore, due to concave convex heating, only fusible and thin material can be processed. A specific fusing machine can be designed with various modules and features keeping in mind increased safety and profitability while relieving the operator as much as possible. We offer the different type of modules and features in the fusing machine. Some of the mod uh, modules and features are mentioned below. In the fusing machine, loading belts, return belts, extension of loading area with hinge side flaps, trays, light table, stacker systems, double pressure roller, multi flex rollers, west band winder, barcode scanner or printer, these all things are required. In the fusing process, regarding the fusible or regardless of which fusible and machines are used, fusing is controlled by four processing components. First component is known as temperature. There is a limit, limited range of temperatures which are affecting for each type of resins. Too high a temperature causing the resin to become too viscous which could result in resin being forced through to the right side of the cloth. Second thing is known as time. Time is the only time element of any value during the fusing process. When the top cloth and fusible are under pressure in the heating zone of the machine. This time cycle for a particular fusible is determined by whether the fusible has a high or low melt resin. If a high or heavy substract is being used and by the nature of the top cloth being used thick or thin or dense or open. Next is the pressure. When the resin is viscous, pressure is applied to the top cloth and fusible assembling to ensure that full contact is made between the top cloth and fusible. Heat transfer is at the optimum level and there is an even penetration of viscous resin into the fibers of the top cloth. Cooling. Enforced cooling is used so that fused assembling can be 
handled immediately after the fusing. Cooling can be induced by various systems including water cooled plates, compressed air circulation and vacuum. Now at the last we talk about the fuse requirements of the fusing. As discussed earlier, the laminate produced by fusing should show the aesthetic quality required by the designer in the finished garment. The strength of bond of the laminate must be sufficient to withstand handling during subsequent operations in the garment manufacturing process as well as flexible which takes place in wear. Fusing must take place within, without in fact either a strike through or a strike back occurring when the softened adhesive resin is pressed into the garment fabric. It is important that it does not go right through to the face side of that fabric. That it does not go back to the outside of the interlining base cloth. The fusing process must not cause thermal shrinkage in the outer fabric. Fusing commonly takes place at around 150 degree centigrade and at this temperature many fabric may subject to thermal shrinkage. A further possible effect of the heat of the fusing process is that of dye sublimation. Fabrics may change color to a level which is unacceptable in a way which causes a mismatch between the fused and unfused part of the garments. Since the fusing process involves pressure, there is a risk that pile fabrics may be subject to crushing during fusing. Where sore proof fabrics are fused, there is a possibility that the presence of a fused interlining in the garment may wick water through the fabric in the fused area while the unfused area remains satisfactorily sour proof. Water resistant interlining have been developed for these situations. Now we are moving for the defects during the fusing process. There are mainly two types of the fault found during fusing. Those are basically explained down. The striking back when two parts of the fabrics are joined by pressure and heat during fusing, it must have the control or to the temperature and pressure. Therefore, the pressure and heat are not controlled properly during fusing so that resin is passed through the lower part of the fabric it is called strike back or striking back. Next is the striking through. When two parts of the fabrics are joined by pressure and heat during fusing it must have the control to the temperature and pressure. Sometimes the pressure and heat are not controlled properly during fusing so that the resin is passed through the upper part of fabric it is called strike through or striking through. Then we have the rebates. This is the rebate. This rebate the size of the rebate of 18 line and this 
can be used for the decorative and reinforcement purposes of denim and denim jeans garments who can i or who can loop this one mostly we are used for the women's garment that's why category comes under the women category and this who can i is mostly used for fastening women's top and dresses hook and loop this is basically for the men's men's wear category where the fastening can be used this button can be used this hook and loop can be used in men's formal trouser now you can see the different types of threads this is basically three ply thread the ticket number of this thread is of 80 ticket number and this thread is basically the spun polyester thread and this thread mainly used in the stitching of seams this thread is again the spun polyester composition is spun polyester and this is the three ply thread and ticket number is 40 this thread mostly can be used in the sewing of denim jackets and jeans this thread the content of the thread is nylon and this is of 3 ply and the ticket number of this thread is 60 and mostly this nylon thread is being used in stitching of leathers the tape is mentioned here is known as the binding tape and this tape is content is satin is a polyester one known as satin tape also and the width is 1 by 4 inch of the width and different length of the rolls used to come and application of this particular thread is binding the raw edges and making taped seam then this is called boning we can see that the material which is called boning and basically this this one is 1 1 and 1/4 inch and this apply for to prevent puckering and dropping or in the dress this material is known as piping the diameter of this particular piping is of 3 mm and it's define the edges or style lines of the garments this one is known as velcro where basically these velcros where the width of this particular velcro is basically 3 by 4 inches the width and it's this fastening of the kids wear we are using we can use this velcro in the rain coat etc then this is the elastic which is 1/4 inch of the elastic this type of the elastic can be used for lingeries for button holes for waist band etc this elastic is basically of 1 inch of the elastic which can be used in shoes bras waist band etc this is eyelet it's called eyelet and basically uh, this eyelet is used in t-shirts women's blazers shorts etc this is less this is the nylon less which can be used for decorative purposes and then this lace is known as the rick rack lace rick rack lace is basically used for the decorative purposes this one is known as ruffle 
this ruffle is made of polyester material and this can be used for decorative purposes. Now this is very interesting to see that this one is tussle. This tussle is basically the polyester thread tussle. It is made of the polyester thread and it is used for decorative purposes in back of the blouses. This tussle is spun polyester tussle. This can be used for decorative purposes that is earrings, bags etc. This another type of tussle basically is called pom pom tussle. It is used for decorative purpose in blouse, hems and tops of the caps. This is called shoulder pad. This shoulder pad is basically used to give the broader shape to shoulder, mostly in the blouses and jackets. This is the buckle, the buckle basically, this is called metal buckle and this buckle, this fastener is basically of the two ends and basically we can use for this buckle is for the decorative purpose. This is called foam, is used for the quilting, this thin palm. And we have the thick foam, which is of 1 by 6, 1 by uh, 3 by 4 uh, inches. And this can be used for applique or quilting. Sewing tools, equipment, and supplies. List of essential sewing tools, equipment and supplies all aiding in helping to sew like pro a brief description about different types of sewing tools equipment and supplies. Seam Reaper. Seam Reaper is a great piece of equipment, but it is very carefully done. One mistake and it could cost the price of a pair of trousers, jacket or how, whatever someone is working on. So this is a sewing tool, you have to be very sure about that during the uses. Then sewing gauge, a small metal rule with a sliding marker ideal for measuring seam allowance, hems, tucks, button holes etc. Next is measuring tape. Measuring tape will be of different kind. Analog which is has both imperial and metric system. A 3 inch bar, bar brass and has literally has 3 inch brass at one end. These can be bought in both 60 inches that is 150 cm to 120 inches that is 300 cm. Needles. Different type of needles used for jeans for trousers, for skirts, dresses and jackets. So regular or universal types of needles is, is required which has been explained in detail in another section. So different type of sewing needles are there, twin needles are there, quilting needles, embroidery, overlock, blind hem needles.
then overlock server there are lot like sewing machines in fact these machines if someone plans to do a lot of sewing save up some cash and get it then different type of sewing machines next is thimble the thimble considered in the hand sewing without a thimble or one of the first sewing tools we should consider for pin cushion a small cushion of pins or needles then scissors scissors with bent handled which is used for cutting out sewing scissors are used for trimming seams and interfacing pinking scissors are used for trimming edges or non fraying fabric so that overlocking is not necessary this is to be used very carefully as pinking scissors are difficult to sharpen you can use thread clippers to cut thread these work will be a spring action blade once someone thread scissors use the thread scissors then the irons which is required for the pressing is need to be clean keep it clean basically don't leave water in overnight always check care level for ironing instruction use a pressing cloth or teflon sole plate as they both protect fabric from scorching never iron over pin or buttons press garments on wrong side not on the right side unless using a press cloth then different type of interfacing are there which has been you discussed in the another section needles the central feature of any sewing machine is the needle or needles many needle types and systems have been developed over time to ensure each sewing machine that uses them perform at it best needle system may be introduced for a number of reasons such as introduction of new or specialized fabrics new sewing machinery or even increased in machine speed each needle system or needle type typically used to be between 6 to 8 sizes available and in the more popular systems there can be up to 15 sizes with each of these needle systems and sizes being available in a range of different needle points the basic functions of a needle the basic functions of a needle is to create a passes in the material for the thread to pass through and 
to carry the needle thread through the material and form a loop which can be picked up by the hook or looper mechanism. To pass the needle thread through the loop formed by the looper mechanism on machines other than lock stitch. Needle parts the physical characteristics. A needle has various parts to execute different functions during the sewing operation which is mentioned below. But the shaped top end which facilitates insertion into the needle bar or clamp sank. The thicker part of the needle held by the needle clamp or the needle set stew. It supports the needle as a whole by providing additional strength. Shoulder. The intermediate section between the sang and the blade. Blade. The needle portion extends from the sang to the eye. This is subjected to the greatest amount of friction and hence heat when it passes through the material. Long groove and short groove. Long groove is present in one side of the needle blade for the convenience of the needle thread. From the take up device and provides a protective channel in which the thread is drawn down through the material during formation. Short groove. It is formed on the other side of long groove towards the subtle hook or looper. It assists in throwing the loop of needle thread. Eye. The eye of the needle is present in the bottom end of the blade. Needle thread allowed through this eye is taken to the bottom area. Scarf clearance. It is a clearance cut in the needle blade just above the eye to permit a closer setting of the subtle hook or looper to the needle point. The point 
of the needle is shaped to provide the most suitable penetration of the material being sewn according to its nature and the desired stitch effect tip the extreme tip shape in combination with the point defines penetration performance other variants most needles are constructed using these features but there are a number of exceptions some of which may have been developed to overcome specific seeming issues or simply designed to meet the machine requirements needle identification a sewing machine needle is identified with three parameters and these parameters are system that is needle system second is point that is needle point and third thing is the needle sizes or sizes system a needle system defines the dimension of a needle to suit the machine type depending on the machine and its stitch type the needle is designed with variations in length of blade sank thickness type of eye etc it is advisable to check with the machine manufacturer for suitability of needle system to machine needle point a needle point is classified broadly into two types round a set or cloth point cutting or leather point so first one is a round set or cloth points and second one is cutting or leather points so first we'll discuss about the round point needles there are believed to be around 20 different round points available out of these six which is common in use round point needles and application a slim set point also referred to as acute round point this point is used for dense woven fabrics as it causes less damage it helps set a straight stitch and minimizes seam puckers 
it is commonly used for microfiber and densely woven fabrics also in coated materials top stitching of collars and cups in shirt next application is set cloth point which is also referred to as normal round point this point is used for normal fabrics with standard seams as it pushes the yarn to the side next is light ball point this point is used for sewing light weight knitted fabric it is sometimes used for fine denim and light densely woven material to avoid damaging the material medium ball point this point is used for sewing medium weight knitted fabric it is also used for medium to coarse denims particularly sand washed and stone washed grids heavy ball point this point is used for coarse knitwear and for sewing dense woven elastic it won't push the elastic yarn through special ball point this is used for medium to coarse elastic material with covered elastomeric threads and very course netwear next is cutting point needles cutting point needles have sharp tips like blades these tips are available with a wide variety of cross sectional shapes such as lens rounded triangular square they can be used while sewing dense non fabric based material they pierce the material more rapidly than the round point types therefore generating less needle heat there are a large number of cutting points of which 11 are in regular use cutting points overview cutting points spear cutting point wedges the size of the needle is generally represented in one of two ways 
although there are different ways. One method is by a number metric also is denoted as capital N and small m. This represents the diameter of the needle blade in hundredth of a millimeter measured just above the scarf, but not at any reinforced part of the blade. For example, a NM 110 needle is 1.1 millimeter in diameter, while a NM 50 needle is half a millimeter in diameter. The thickness of the blade on the right is 1.1 mm wide, which is shown in nm as 110. The alternative standard needle sizing method is single oblique Asia numbering system sometimes referred to as the American system that uses a number that represents a size. Below shows these NM and Singer comparisons along with a number of other size references. Comparison of equivalent needle size. Below mention is the comparison of equivalent needle sizes in metric, then unison special, Singer, Levis, Marrow, WNG, new number 459R, 293 bonus. Here is a quick way to determine if the thread and the sewing machine needle are compatible. Take half a meter of thread being used on the machine and thread it through the eye of a loose needle. Hold the thread vertically with the needle at the top. If needle is too big, it will drop to the bottom of the thread. If the needle is too small, it will stick at the top of the thread. If the needle is the right size, it will slowly spiral to the bottom of the thread. However, a larger than normal needle may have to be used to penetrate thicker fabric or stitch over the top of pronounced or bulky seams. Common problems and solutions. Sewing machine needles can break during sewing and some of the common reasons for breakage are mentioned below.
along with the possible solution. Reason Usage of a poor quality needle Solution Use good quality branded needles. Second in reason pulling the fabric as someone sew. This puts stress on needle, the solution is this puts stress on the needle and bends it out of place. So, care should be taken to ensure the cloth is not pulled. The needle does not go in properly. Check the manual, make sure it is inserted properly in the machine. Reason the needle is too delicate for the sewing. Use heavy gauge needles for sewing heavier fabrics like denim. The reason again the pressure foot is loose solution it will cause the needle to hit the foot and bend. So there should be a screw you can tighten the foot width. Needle checklist Inserting a new needle Always ensure the needle is the correct needle system for the sewing machine. Make sure the needle size or eye fits the thread size being used. Make sure the needle is pushed all the way into the needle holder. Ensure that the angle of the needle is correct. After inserting a needle in the machine, turn the machine hand wheel manually to make sure the needle is not contacting any parts. After inserting a needle, new needle, needle checkpoint, next is checking a needle that is already in a machine. We should make sure that is the needle inserted correctly, is the needle contacting any machine parts, is the needle bent, is the eye rough or blocked with melted fiber, is the point damaged. When in doubt, change the needle. Thank you.